we are on Acts 24. Uh, it's through our Acts series we've been preaching. Uh, now, this is just, this is Paul now in front of a judge. He's in front of the governor, which is Felix. And he's there because he was accused of some things, and we'll go through it, uh, as um, Aleki was explaining in the Tongan. So I'll explain it in the English uh, for our English listeners. And it's just about Paul's uh, before the judge, his defense, but also he speaks truthfully. Uh, and then we'll see what else we'll learn from it in Acts um, 24. So I do have some slides there. Uh, that way, hopefully it works all right. I, ch- I had trouble with this this morning, um, but we'll see how we go. Now, point one is from verses 1 to 10, and that is believers will suffer many accusations for the gospel. If you can see it, or if it's too small, pull out your Bibles and, and we'll read it together. So if you can see it, let's read together. Five days later, Ananias, the high priest, came down with some elders and a lawyer named Tertullus. These men presented their case against Paul to the governor. When Paul was called in, Tertullus began to accuse him and said, We enjoy great peace because of you, and reforms are taking place for the benefit of this nation because of your foresight. We acknowledge this in every way and everywhere, most excellent Felix, with utmost gratitude. But so that I will not burden you any further, I request that you would be kind enough to give us a brief brief hearing. To be a plague and agitator among all the Jews throughout the Roman world and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. He even tried to desecrate the temple and so we apprehended him. By examining him yourself, you will be able to discern the truth about these charges we are bringing against him. The Jews also joined in the attack, alleging that these things were true. When the governor motioned for him to speak, Paul replied, Because I know you have been a judge of this nation for many years, I am glad to offer my defence in what concerns me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So again, just a quick explanation with uh, this. Five days later, he comes in and Paul and they're standing before the judge. Now, Tertullus is very smart, the way he, he does his argument, right? He flatters him. And this is what Alegi was saying in the Tongan. He's flattering uh, Felix to blind him so he can kind of favor the Jews before hearing Paul. So he's, he flatters him, and then he gives him three accusations, or four, four accusations. But the first one is that he's an agitator. So he's causing trouble in the Roman world. This is a big one for the Romans because... Paul's a Roman citizen. It's almost like he's going against the government. As they could see it as treason. That's by death, right? It's pen- penalty by death. The second one is not only that, but he's also causing trouble amongst the Jews throughout the whole Roman world. He's going around causing trouble. Not only that, the third one he's accused of, he's causing trouble in the church, in the temple, the synagogues. And then they said... He even desecrated it by our laws. By the Jewish laws, he should, be, he should die by death. And that's what we were learning. We've seen it, um, a few chapters ago in Acts where they thought uh, Paul was there uh, with one of the uh, Jewish the Gentiles from Asia. Now, these are the things that he's accused of. Now, Paul speaks. Before he defends himself, he tells uh, Felix, look, I know you've been a judge here for many years. I'm happy to give my defense. Because, for, one, for starters, he's not new. He knows the law. He's been judging that nation for a while. So he's probably familiar with a lot of their laws. See these accusations that Paul's getting. We will get it as well as, as a church. You'll be accused maybe at your workplace that you don't like your work because you don't want to work on a Sunday. Your boss might say to you, look, if you're not going to work on a Sunday, I've got to find someone else. If you can't come and do everything for this work, then you're not worthy here. That's what you might be accused of. Because for us, our worship days are Sunday. But you know, Sunday is almost like double time, money. Um, but the boss might just want you to work Sundays, so he wants you there all the time. You may be accused of that. What about in the, your families? You may be accused in your families. 
your head veils? What's your defense when they say, why do you wear that? Is that new? There's something new here. What about tithing? When they, when they ask you, do you do misnali? We don't do mis, misnali as a, as a church here. We do tithing, which is a biblical teaching. What's your answer? When you're accused of these things, where are you going to find it? You've got to find it in the word. See, and all these accusations you will get because of the gospel, because you want to follow what the word of God says. These are things that you'll, you'll find and you'll receive them as you go throughout and grow through your faith. 1 Peter 3, verses 14 and 15. But even if you should suffer for righteousness, you are blessed. Do not fear them or be intimidated, but in your hearts regard Christ the Lord as holy, ready at any time to give a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. So when you're doing all these practices, are you doing it because you regard the Lord as holy? Or are you doing it because we're here? How about if you were to go to some other church for, for a Sunday? Would you still wear it? What is the reason for your faith? What is, what is it? Where's your standing? If your standing is not on biblical grounds, we're shaky. We're shaky. Doesn't matter how many accusations, all it takes is one and we'll fly away. The word of God is our foundation for when we are accused. And you will get it. It's not new. They got it a long time ago. Everyone that followed God was persecuted, was accused of wrong things. We'll see in the next point how Paul defends himself. But this one here is he's being accused. When you're accused of your belief, where are you standing? Are you standing in the word or are you standing in something else? Point two is from verses 11 to 23. And that is believers must speak truthfully in the presence of authorities. Uh, verse 11, if you see it, uh, let's read together. You can verify for yourself that it is no more than 12 days since I went up to worship in Jerusalem. They didn't find me arguing with anyone or causing a disturbance among the crowd, either in the temple or in the synagogues or anywhere in the city. Neither can they prove the charges they are now making against me. But I admit this to you. I worship the God of my ancestors according to the way, which they call a sect, believing everything that is in accordance with the law and written in the prophets. I have hope in God, which these men themselves also accept, that there will be a resurrection both of the righteous and unrighteous. I always strive to have a clear conscience toward God and men. After many years, I came to bring charitable gifts and offerings to my people. While I was doing this, some Jews from Asia found me ritually purified in the temple without a crowd and without any uproar. It is they who ought to be here before you to bring charges, if they have anything against me. Or let these men here state what wrongdoing they found in me when I stood before the Sanhedrin. Other than this one statement I shouted while standing among them, Today I am on trial before you concerning the resurrection of the dead. Since Felix was well informed about the way, he adjourned the hearing saying, When Lysias the commander comes down, I will decide your case. He ordered that the centurion keep poor under guard, though he could have some freedom, and that he should not prevent any of his friends from meeting his needs. It's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Paul now is defending himself. He's talking now. And then he tells, this is what he tells Felix, go check for yourself. It hasn't been more than 12 days since I've been in Jerusalem. Meaning, it's, that is not enough time to cause a rebellion. That is not enough time to gather people. Remember, there's no phones then. So someone had to go and tell a message for a long time. All right, so he's telling, go and check. 12 days, it's not enough. That's his first defense to the first charge, right? Of, being, of causing trouble. Now, the second one is they didn't find him arguing with people or causing an uproar outside, in the temple, in the synagogues. They didn't find it. There's his defense for the second charge of causing chaos amongst the Jewish people throughout the whole Roman world. These men can't prove these charges. But he admits 
The third one, that he is a worshipper of the way. Now the way is Jesus. That's the way uh, the Christians, that was uh, the way back then. Uh, that's what they were called. And he admits that, yeah, he worships this way according to the prophets and the Bible. The Bible is the Old Testament back then. And so he says that these men that are accusing me and me, we have one thing in common. We believe in the resurrection of unrighteous and righteous people, right? that there will be a resurrection. Paul also tells Felix, look, it's been many years since I've been back in Jerusalem. I came back here to give gifts to my, to my people. And that was the gifts throughout the Acts when we talked about it. He was going around collecting gifts to bring to Jerusalem to help the Jews, to help the poor there. And that's what he's telling Felix. I haven't been here for that long. And then he goes, these people that are accusing me, they seen me in the temple. They seen me. They're from Asia, from Ephesus area. They're not even here. So if, they, if, if they're not here to, to present their charges, ask these men here that are coming, that is the high priest and the elders, if, they, if they've seen me do any, any other wrong. Nothing. They can't prove a thing. So, Felix says, look, I'll adjourn for now. I'll wait till Lysus, the commander, comes. Um, and then I will decide your case. Right? So he keeps him in jail. And he just says, look, let Paul be provided by his people. Give him some freedom. He speaks truthfully. He doesn't hide anything. He doesn't exaggerate. He doesn't add things to make it look like he's being victimized because he's by himself. He looks like he's by himself, but he's not. Is with Christ. You have a whole church here, a whole church that's accusing Paul. But he doesn't, he doesn't waver, he just speaks the truth. And he speaks straight. He doesn't add stories on top to make it look like he's the victim. He's done nothing wrong, but he's accused because he's following Christ. When we do nothing wrong, it's because we follow the word, the word of God. And believe me, it's not easy. It's not easy to do it. But we don't rely on ourselves, right? We rely on Christ. And through doing these things, we're able to speak truth amongst all accusations. We don't get angry. We don't go say, we want to fight you. No. We just speak the word. Speak the truth. Some people don't want to hear it. A lot of people don't want to hear the truth. But it's unloving again to not tell the truth. And he's on trial because of the resurrection. There's some people that will believe that will have the same beliefs. And the majority of them know. The word of God is what we stand on. What about those in prison? See, Paul's in prison is getting help by family. We can help those as well that are less fortunate and have the opportunity that we have here. You can hear the gospel here. In China, it's probably underground. There's no freedom there. Try to go to Saudi Arabia and probably preach the gospel there. When not come back. You have freedom here. We can preach the gospel. We don't have to hide. But the other people do, other countries. How do we help them? How do we help them? Well, we have a missionary, Taulama. He's out there in an Asian country. They don't even know the gospel as well as we do. They don't have the freedom here. We can help him. We remember those in prison, pray for them. As if you were suffering yourself. But always speak truth. Always. From the word of God. Proverbs 12, 17. Is whoever speaks the truth declares what is right. But a false witness speaks deceit. And in John 8, 44. You are of your father the devil. And you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning. And does not stand in the truth. Because there is no truth in him, when he tells a lie, he speaks from his own nature, because he is a liar and the father of lies. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know when you speak, not just in church, but outside with your work, outside with your friends, tell the truth. Don't lie. Tell the truth. We are people of God here. We're people of Christ. doesn't matter whether you're standing in front of a judge in authorities or you're standing in front of the church. You speak the truth regardless. 
Third last point is verse 24 to 27, and that is believers must not be tempted by money or power as they proclaim the gospel. Uh, verse 24, if you see it, let's read together. Several days later, when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, who was Jewish, he sent for Paul and listened to him on the subject of faith in Christ Jesus. Now as he spoke about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix became afraid and replied, Leave for now, but when I have an opportunity, I'll call for you. At the same time, he was also hoping that Paul would offer him money, so he sent for him quite often and conversed with him. After two years had passed, Porticus Festus succeeded Felix, and because Felix wanted to do the Jews a favour, he left Paul in prison. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Felix comes with his wife, Drusilla, who's a Jew, comes to hear Paul and listen to Paul talk about faith in Christ. Now, Paul speaks about righteousness, self-control, and the coming judgment. Felix becomes afraid, says, look, stop. I will speak to you later. Now, we know Felix wasn't a right, like a, he was a corrupt judge, because he was hoping Paul would give him money. It tells us there. He kept calling for Paul, hoping Paul would bribe him. Two years later, two years, two years, he succeeded by someone else. And to do a Jews, the Jews a favour, even though there was, they couldn't prove any charge against Paul, he left him in jail for two years. Because he wanted to favour the Jews. See, Paul speaks about righteousness, self-control, coming judgment, Felix. What's our response when we hear the gospel? When, we, when the gospel is spoken up here about self-control, righteousness, the coming judgment that's coming, what's the response for us? See, most of us should repent. We should hear it. But maybe because we don't, our heart is full of something else. Full of money, maybe, power, like Felix. There's no room there for the gospel because all we want is money, and power like Felix. So the gospel has no effect on him. It doesn't change him at all. All he hears is blah, blah, blah. He's waiting for money. That's it. That's all he is. If that's what you're hearing today, we've got to be warned. Be warned. Be afraid. Just like Felix, be afraid. Because it means maybe you are not saved yet. It means maybe you will go to destruction. And if your heart is full of something else and your focus is always on something else and there's no room for the gospel, ask God, God, remove all this stuff. Just put your word and things about you in my heart as a treasure. Now, Matthew 6, 21. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. And then in Proverbs eleven four, Wealth is not profitable on the day of wrath, but righteousness rescues from death. It's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So if all you're thinking about is money now and you're not thinking future with Christ, this is where you're going. It means nothing. It cannot save you when the judgment comes. You cannot be saved by wealth. Only righteousness you can be saved, and that righteousness is in Christ. Right? You need to give up your life to Christ. What about when you're in position of power? If you're at work, school, your circle of friends, the priests, the pastors, they're in such positions of power. They are very in such positions of power. We must humble always through the word of God. Otherwise, we risk abusing them. 1 Samuel 8, verses 1 to 3. Let's read it together. When Samuel grew old, he appointed his sons as judges over Israel. His firstborn son's name was Joel, and his second was Abijah. They were judges in Beersheba. However, his sons did not walk in his ways. They turned toward dishonest prophet, took bribes, and preferred a justice. It's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is very easy to be corrupted if you have power. If you're in authority or power. If you're at work, at home. Older siblings do it. They abuse their eldership by telling all the little kids to clean up and do things while they sit down and relax. 
parents do the same. You gotta be careful that whatever position you, whatever influence you have, you do not use it for your own self gain. That's what Felix did. Money, power was what he wanted. These are temptations that can make a Christian fall away from the faith. Don't let it, don't let it, don't let it take you away. Now the summary here, before we go on to the sacrament, let me just remind you, roughly. Now when you're accused of the gospel, and which you will, you will be accused of the gospel, don't be afraid. Don't be this hard. Don't be afraid. Regard Christ as holy in your heart. And then speak the truth. Don't hide. Don't lie. Don't add stories to make it look like a good movie. Just tell the truth. Straightforward. Be careful of money and power. If that's in your heart, you'll be corrupted. It can't save us from the coming wrath. Righteousness can, which is in Christ. Give that all up. Ask Christ, when you finish today, after we take the sacrament, ask, ask Christ, change. Please help me. Because I don't want to be like Felix and be afraid my whole life. We're not afraid as Christians. We are waiting for us to go to heaven. Everyone else out there is not. Amen.